Hey farmers, my name is Stan and I'm the developer of the Maps for FS tool. In this tutorial, I will show you and tell you how you can create a farming simulator map in 10 simple steps. But first, a couple of words about the tool itself. You probably heard about this website where you can generate a map, but uh, I also hope that you saw this message about the limitations on this website. But what if I told you that you can launch the exact same tool on your machine without any limitations? And the only thing you need to do is to execute one single command in your terminal. To clarify, this step is completely optional, and if you prefer to stick with the website, you are free to go. But I still recommend to use the local version of the app, because it has no limitations and has some cool features that are not available on the website. Ok, as I said, you only need to execute one single command in the terminal, but actually you need to install the docker first. But I'm sure that you guys are capable of downloading one file from Google and click next, 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 yeah? So, let's go to the repo, find its readme, and the section about the docker. Here it is, we can copy the command here, open terminal and paste the command here. After executing the command in the terminal, you can open your Docker desktop application, find your Docker container and click here. And as you can see, the same application was launched on your local machine, but without any limitations and with some cool features that are not available on the website. Ok, let's get back to the 10 steps of generating your farming simulator map. And the first step is to obtain coordinates of the center point of your map. You can get it from Google Maps or any other map that you are using, it doesn't matter. So in Google Maps you can just right click, copy and then paste it right here. As you can see the preview was changed. Second step is to select the size of your future map. As you can see there's a different sizes available here, even the custom ones. But I recommend you to use 2 km map or 4 km map if you're a beginner. Because they're smaller and it's easier to create them actually. So I personally prefer 4 km map because I quite balance it. So as you can see, the preview was changed once again. And now all I need to do is to click this button and the generation will be started. Once generation is complete, you will see some preview images here. So here is some textures that were added to your map. Here is the damn image. It's just a colored version of damn image. So you can see where is highs and lows. And this is the damn image for the background terrain. We'll talk about this later. And here is the background terrain itself. So this is a region of our map. We will soon open it in Blender and see what's inside of it. But now you need to click on download button and here is our map. First, a couple of words about the data that it's used for your map. It comes from OpenStreetMap, not from Google Maps, not from satellite pictures or something like this. So if you miss some objects on your map or they're incorrect, you can go to OpenStreetMap and edit by yourself actually. So, if you don't like what you see here, some fields are incorrect, or some roads incorrect, or maybe some is missing, you can just edit it right here. It's just a friendly reminder. Now you can go to your downloads folder, find your map, and unzip it with any software you are using. In the inside of the folder you downloaded, you'll find some directories, we'll talk about them a little bit later. But if you want to open your map right now, it's here. And it's actually ready to use, you can go and mod it if you want, but it's missing background terrain. Some terrain that is around your map. And without it, the map will actually doesn't look that good, so I recommend to create. A background terrain and we'll talk about it in next steps. So this is how my map looks in Giants Editor. As you can see there's some fields here, some roads, some buildings, some rivers. Um, just a reminder, 
if you will see some artifacts in your viewport, you can click terrain, terrain, and this reload material button. It should help. But now we can create our background terrain so our map won't levitate in the space. The next step for us is to download the satellite images that we will use for textures and for overview map. And for this case, we will need the Fugis application. Don't worry, you'll find all download links, all tutorials, and everything you need in the description of the video. Now in Fugis, you will need to select Web Vipmark Services, select the map you prefer, and use Google Satellite. Load it, and we need some scripts from the folder of the map you downloaded. So what we're gonna do now? It's click here, right on console, then here, show editor. You will see this field here. Open our map folder, open script directory, and here is the script we need. It's background rasterize. We open it in Notepad, copy and paste it here. So after pasting the script here, you need to edit the save location right here. So you need to put your own folder to save images, of course. And usually you will need only one entry here. This one, the ground full margin. But you will find description for all entries in the books. And after it, you can just click here and wait a little bit. As a result of the script, you will see the image that was downloaded from Fugis. And as you can see, it's pretty detailed and it's huge size, as you can see. And now we've come to the trickiest part of this tutorial is to align our map to this satellite image. And for this, we will use Photoshop. Or you can stick with your own editor, which supports layers. So in Photoshop, we need to create a new file and the size of it should be twice bigger than the map size. In my case, it will be eight kilometers. And here we are going to go to the view section guides new guide layout and pay attention pay attention to these values four and four so i usually prefer to use a gray background for my images so we can look a few and set it gray. now we will add some layers from our map to align it later, you can go to Map, Data, and find some textures that will be useful in your case. Usually it's roads. So you know, find a road here. For example, gravel small should look right. And drag and drop here. So it's black with white line, which is a road. We can use Magic Man tool to select all black and remove it. Oh, sorry, we need to rasterize it first. And here it is. For convenience, we can change the color of it, like here. And the color overlay here, you know, set it, I don't know, like mm, something gray, maybe. This one should look fine. And we will do the same for a couple of other layers. I've added several layers from my map. It's rivers and two types of roads. Now we can drag and drop here our image from satellite. It's a huge one, so we'll need to wait a little bit. And we will need, we will need to change the opacity for it. So it will be easier to align it. So, as you can see, the image is not perfectly aligned. There is some shift between rivers on satellite image and on our map. And we will use the free transform tool or any other tool like 
like this in the editor that you are using. But in Photoshop, it's very simple. And we'll start to adjust it. Like running here, here, and so on. It will take some time, but remember that you usually need to rotate the background image a little bit. So it took me around two minutes to line it, and now we can remove extra layers from here. And make the opacity full again. So we don't need the ground anymore. And we can save our image as PNG. After saving our satellite image, we need to go to Blender and import our background terrain. We will use the full tile. So go to File, Import, Object, and select our background full, this one. After importing the file, you probably won't see anything. So you need to click on the object, right click on the scene, select Set Origin, Origin, origin to Geometry and right here or an hotkey now we need to set everything to zeros and here is our background terrain it will start to disappear it's okay we need to switch to the view and make this value higher like this now we need to adjust the size of our object we know that it should be 8 kilometers so it probably looked like this one and let's switch to the top view and now we need to simplify our object because it has uh, a lot of vertices so we need to select it go to modifiers and find decimate here and we'll put something like 0.5 for example but you may adjust it on your own and then click on the object with the right mouse button and select shade smooth so it was simplified and now we need to add our texture we need to go to material create a new one click here and select image texture then click open button and choose the image that we created recently this one and now we need to set emission to black right here now switch to the UV editing tab and here is our object Press the A hotkey and then U hotkey and select the unwrap angle base. Now we can go back to the layout tab, select for example top and then press Z button like this. Now it's a final step of creating background terrain. Ensure that you are on a top view here and press shift a create a new plane here and we need to specify its size as a map size in my case it will be four kilometers and now ensure that it's above your map so we need to put it like 300 or maybe higher a little bit like this Okay, it's well above the map. Now we can go to the top view again. And here is our map will be, and this is our background terrain. So now you need to press tab button, select your full layer here, and 
press the A button to select it. Then control click on the plane here to select both of them. Go to mesh and knife project here. So here it is. We selected the part we need to remove from our background and press the delete button and select faces. Here it is. It was perfectly removed. So now we can remove our plane object because we don't need it anymore and exit the editing mode by hitting the thumb button and our background terrain is ready. Let's switch to the top view and let's save the Blender file just in case in the folder with our map. And then export uh, Giants Editor. You will need to install this plugin first, but don't worry, all links will be in the description. And make sure that you selected the object here and hit the export selected button here. Done. Now we can import this file to our map. So now it's time to import our background terrain to our map. Go to File, Import, and select the background object we just created. And you will need to adjust and slate Y value and also the scale Y value here. So I didn't put too much effort trying to align the background terrain with my map because, you know, it's tutorial. I don't need it perfectly aligned. So, uh, as you can see, there is some fields here. And all the zeros. So the maps FS actually generates uh, fields too from OpenStreetMap data. So if some fields are missing or the wrong shape, you can go to OpenStreetMap, edit them, add them, or anything you need to do. But right now we are going to scripts, shared scripts, map, farmland fields, and field toolkit. And all we need to do here is to click Repaint Fields and select All Fields. So our fields was repainted and here they are. There are some glitches. They appear when I'm recording the video. So these fields will work in game. You don't need to create them manually. And I recommend to edit this data on OpenStreetMap without uh, need to edit in in-game, you know, because it's much easier to do it on OpenStreetMap than in, in Giants Editor. And the final step of our tutorial is to create farmlands. So select this button here. And this is how you create the actual farmlands, the one you buy in the game. Select this layer farmlands and now you need to paint them with farmland 1, farmland 2 and so on and so on. So until you paint all the farmlands you need to create in game. So now you can actually start creating your own map here, adding buildings, roads, rivers, trees and so on. So it will become like a real map where you can play. So that's it for today, and I hope that this tutorial was helpful for you. You'll find detailed tutorials, some docs in the repo, and if you have questions or some problems with the tool, or maybe you don't understand how to do anything, feel free to ask the questions in our Discord channel. I will be there to help you. So have a nice modding, guys. Uh, thank you for watching. See you. Bye-bye.